Hi, I'm Brianna. Today I'm going to take you through how to set up your McHire account. We're going to talk about how to log in, how to set up interview times, and a bunch more really useful stuff for the new user. So welcome and thank you so much for being a part of the Scott Family team. So everybody should recognize McHire. We are going to start by logging in. You will need an EID and password to log in. If you do not have an EID and password to put into this webpage, please contact our office phone number linked into the description down below. Once you're in here, you are going to see a list of candidates. Uh, this is going to look a little bit daunting at first, but don't worry, we'll get to this in a bit. Let's start by setting up our profile. We're gonna go into the menu here and click the settings wheel. And you're gonna click my profile. Once you are in your profile, there are a few things that you have to set up right towards the beginning, one of which is setting up a phone number and email. The reason you should have a phone number in here is because Mikhail will actually send you text message notifications when they set up interview times with you. So that is a very, very good one to set up. Another one is your email. You can also have those notifications sent by email if you prefer. Now, if you scroll down here, you're going to see a place for time zone. And as you can see, uh, McHire is based out of Arizona, so it's going to auto set your time zone to Arizona. That uh, is not us, so we need to switch that to US Eastern uh, right away so that we receive those notifications at the correct time. Also right here is where you can set up your open interview times. Uh, this is where you can set up what time you are available every point in the week to do interviews. Uh, McHire is going to set up those interviews for you automatically. You're not going to have to do anything. So whatever you put here is what Olivia is going to schedule you for. So to set that up, you can click the edit availability and it's a drag and drop function. So say you're available on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Right here we've got Wednesday 1 to 2 p.m. If you click and drag, it will highlight in blue bring up an available time and your parameters for this. A couple other things that you might want to set up within your profile include setting up busy days, vacations, and holidays. Uh, this is right underneath the open interview times in your profile, and this is where you are able to specifically block off open interview times for certain days. So say, for example, tomorrow you, let's see, uh, open interview times Thursday from 3 to 4. Say uh, Thursday the 14th, you are going to be super, super busy and don't want to receive applications during that time. You can click this date. It's going to add you to your busy days list, and therefore you will not be scheduled for interviews on that date. Another thing you can set up in your profile is the duration of an interview and what type of default interview style you prefer. So it currently is set up as a phone interview as the default, but you can change that to an in-person interview if you prefer, and you can choose the amount of time that Olivia will schedule for you. Uh, it is currently defaulted at 30 minutes, but say you want Olivia to schedule an interview with you every 15 minutes, you can change that right here. This is also where you can change your scheduling timeline. This is the minimum notice you need before an interview should occur. Uh, this will in prohibit Olivia from setting up a interview with you, say, in two hours. So for example, it is defaulted as 12 hours. Olivia will not set up an interview with you uh, within 12 hours of the current time. And there is also an option for uh, how many weeks an interview can be scheduled in advance. It is defaulted as two weeks. And if you wanna change that, if you wanna schedule interviews out to three weeks, four weeks, you can, but we prefer to leave it right there at the two week mark. Another thing you can set up here is the individual interview instructions. So for example, if you want to make sure that your candidates are coming up to the cash register when they arrive for their interview, you can put in those instructions here. That way they don't just go sit at a table and you're not quite sure what they're here for. The next thing I'm going to help you set up is your text and email alerts. If you click menu and click the settings wheel and then click the alert management, Mikhair is going to let you know that you have unsaved changes, so you can't go ahead and save those. 
and then it'll pull up a list of the different notifications that you can set up. So there's a lot of different alerts that you can set up in here. I'll kind of go through each one of these as we go. The candidate submission alert will send you an alert every time a new candidate arrives in your inbox. So that's a really good one to set up. If you're receiving too many throughout the day and it's just pinging you and it's a bit too much, what I like to do is a daily summary email. This will send you a daily summary of all of the applications you've received each day. You can set that up at a specific time as well. Uh, mine usually come in in the morning. Another one that I highly recommend you set up is the candidate message alert. This will send you an alert anytime a candidate sends a new message. So if uh, they have already went through their candidate questionnaire with Olivia and they randomly set out a new message an hour later, it will alert you of that so that you can stop in and take a look at what that candidate is. The scheduling alert is another good one to set up. This one's going to let you know if there is a change in a candidate's schedule, if they reschedule an interview or cancel their interview. That's a very good one as well. This one's also kind of fun. Uh, I have this set up with a couple specific keywords. Um, I like to put this in just in case a candidate starts talking about something I'm specifically interested in. Maybe they bring up the word scheduling or flexible scheduling and you want to hop in there and talk specifically about one of our benefits or something like that. That is a really good way to do that. The candidate rating alert specifically sends you a notification when a candidate gives us a low rating. So if a candidate has specifically went through their um, capture sequence with Olivia and then given us a low rating, it will alert you and let you know that they had an issue so that you can reach out to that individual directly. Another one that's really good is the request alerts. So this is triggered by a certain thing. Uh, if there is an application issue, if there's an onboarding issue, you can set this up to send you an alert specifically to let you know that a candidate's having, having an issue. Another one that I have set up is a note alert. This will send an alert to me, for example, if anybody uses my name. Uh, so if somebody mentions Brianna in the middle of a conversation between a candidate and a crew member or a manager, I will get a notification of that and then I will know and be able to hop in and answer whatever question you might have. And then you can set up here at the bottom, uh, push notification hours. So you can uh, set this up specifically so that um, you don't receive notifications at times that you are not working. This is really, really nice so that you don't receive a notification in the middle of the night. I know all of these look a little bit daunting, but I will tell you, I have a lot of these set up for myself and I don't receive notifications too often. The only one that really uh, kind of triggers me is this candidate submission alert. I have this set up currently. I think I'm going to turn it off because uh, with all 15 stores, I get a ping on my phone about once every hour of a new application being submitted. Uh, in that case, I will just get my daily summary report and uh, go from there. And I really like that report specifically because really big right at the top, it tells you exactly how many applicants we received today. So I think that's really cool. Next, I wanna talk about putting together your own personal schedule. Outside of open interview times, you have the opportunity to set up a schedule each week just in case it's different. Under the menu, you're gonna click my calendar. And as you can see here, I have open interview times set up for the company. So we've got Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday here. Uh, but if you want to add additional times in here for yourself, say you have availability on Wednesday from noon to one, you can do that here. So this is going to add an available time, but this is going to go away. Since you didn't set it up in your settings as an open interview time, this is just this Wednesday the 13th from noon to one. And then you can click save here. Now let's talk about the open jobs that you have available. If you click on the menu and click on my jobs, it's going to pull up a list of all of the open jobs available at your store. You can toggle these on and off at any time. So for example, say you need a maintenance worker, you can flip right here, turn it to blue, confirm your changes, and the maintenance worker position would then be open. And then you're able to receive applicants for that job. 
Uh, never turn off the crew member position. We're obviously always in need of crew members. And we do leave open generally the shift manager position, the general manager, and the department manager so that we can get those candidates and maybe move them around where they are needed. Now, a couple things about our candidates specifically. This is going to be a list of all of the candidates we've received in McHire and their information. So we'll kind of play around with this Brianna test here. Uh, this bar down here at the bottom, this send text message and email, anything that you send here is going to go directly to the candidate. So if you want to say something to the candidate specifically, that is where you need to do it. There's quite a bit of information that you can scroll through. The first thing you're always going to see that a candidate goes through is Olivia's questionnaire. This is going to be where she asks for their name, phone number, email address, and all those different things. One thing to note is if a candidate is not 16 years or older based on this question, Olivia will not auto schedule an interview with that individual or send them the full application. It will leave that individual in the candidate complete category and you will have to manage manually move them through the system if you are looking for 14 and 15 year olds. After Olivia takes you through her questionnaire, she should go ahead and send the candidate the full application if they meet our criteria. And that is what she's done here. Uh, if that does not happen, you can go ahead and force the full application to be sent directly through this button here. If you click the down arrow, there's a full application and you can click the send full application button and it will automatically send our full application to a candidate. After that, Olivia will go ahead and auto schedule this individual for an interview. So for example, you can see here the candidate received a message that gives them three options that they can choose from uh, based on Rachel's schedule. Something good to note, as you can see here, uh, anything that you type in this box is going to send directly to the candidate. So be careful with this little bar here. But if you want to write notes about a specific candidate, say you've had a conversation with someone about them, you can write that all in here. You can add a note about this specific candidate and this is all private. A couple other things to note here in the candidate information is the hire details. Uh, as you can see, it will pull up different forms for the candidate. The full application has been sent but not started. Once this is complete, it will give you a PDF link to be able to open and view all of the candidate's information. This is also where you will find their onboarding documents and you can upload forms here as well. So if there's a certain form that you want to keep on file, say a photocopy of their license, you can add that right here. There's also a box here for their resume. You can specifically either upload their resume if they've given you a copy or view their resume if they have uploaded it themselves. This button here is going to be where you move them through the process in any way. So this is where you can uh, hard create the circumstance that you want. So for example, you can invite them to an interview if they have, if Olivia hasn't already done so. You can also send them an offer, which does populate an auto letter that it sends to that individual that you can specifically put in a pay rate and a start date. I highly recommend you guys use this because this is a good way for Kelly to see exactly what that pay rate for this individual is based on your interview. You can also send the onboarding directly to a candidate through here. You can add them into the higher category and you can reject candidates. There's a bunch of different reasons why we might have to reject a individual such as not meeting age requirements or just not eligible for work or an interview no-show. And another good category to remember is the silver medalist. Basically what this means is that this candidate just doesn't work for us at this time. Uh, you can put them here and then maybe in the future you can revisit this individual if you are looking to hire more people. If you have any questions about setting up your account in McHire or certain questions about using McHire, please leave them in the comments down below. I will be answering any questions that you guys leave. Uh, there are also a lot of other videos on here that will help you with different things within the McHire system and I hope that this helps you guys set up your accounts and get better acclimated with the McHire system. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later.
拜。